Hi everyone, Lazy Fire here. Welcome back to the Hate the Player podcast. This is episode 60. Three Toes is here. Yay! And uh, while we do like to hate players on the Hate the Player podcast, we do have to say uh, congratulations to the women's soccer team. Who, Dude, uh, that game was insane. I did not get to see it. I kind of just saw a news highlight and I'm like, oh, that's neat. Three words, half field goal. What? Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Uh, what's her name? Um, God, I... I Wish I could be a poser and act like I'd followed this oh, yeah. a lot closer than I Oh, you mean I like did. all the people who cared about yeah. horse racing all of a sudden <laughs> <Yeah>. last year? <laughs> um, but yeah, one of the uh, one of the women got well. She had a hat trick mm. all within the first half. Wow! So three goals in the first half by herself. Did uh, Japan one show of them, up or <laughs> they they ended up scoring two. Oh. I mean, it's yeah. They the U.S. just like dismantled Japan's defense. Um, but yeah, she had a, a half field goal like she caught well she was a little past half field but still um she caught the goal the goalkeeper too far out of her box and just popped it up and placed it perfectly over her head and went oh. right in nice neat that's always good to see stuff like that I, it's been weird like i think people have a hard time figuring out how to cover the uh, the women's world cup because it doesn't generate the same amount of attention <laughs> But right. at the same time, in the U.S., our women's team has won three championships since 1991 yeah. versus the men's team that has won, like, I think, a World Cup ever, or maybe more. I, I don't, don't – I didn't think the men had won a World Cup. Uh, had they? Maybe. Maybe not. I am looking it up right now. Yeah, I don't have my tablet handy. I can't look it up. Well, my computer is slow as shit because I know why. I've been processing shit all day. Uh, World Cup of Football, that's perfect. Anyways, so, kind of getting on the way, you and I were talking beer a little bit before we started up on this. Uh, you had a brewing accident, and I think you said you were recovering from that still. Uh, I mean, physically I've recovered. I don't, but I don't know about emotionally. Mm. Uh, <laughs> it's really tough to lose a gallon of beer due to, a, you know, personal stupidity. Yeah. Um. But it, I mean, it's, I, I couldn't resist. I did, I did sneak another taste. It's, it's coming along good. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll be anxious to see what it tastes like when it's finally done after about a month in the cooler. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a whole lot of fun, you know, getting into home brewing. And of course, all my friends are like, oh, are you going to open your own brewery? Yeah. It's like, I mean, I'd love to. I don't know if I could ever financially undertake that considering yeah. it costs probably at least a million. Oh yeah. To get to get anything going. Um but god, we just had I think the 10th or 11th brewery in South Carolina open within Jeez. the past 2 weeks and it's it's exploding. Yeah. And as you know, as as cool as that is, at the same time people are like, "Oh, well, you know, is the bubble going to pop?" Mm -hmm. You know, how much is too much and you know, it's people on both sides saying, well, you know, it's it's great as long as the breweries are doing it for the right reason. Mm -hmm. Like, if, they, if they're just doing it to kind of jump on the train and, you know, make some money, then it'll be pretty obvious from the get-go, and they won't last long. And the really good breweries are going to last because they're focusing on the beer. Yeah. A uh, perfect example, there's one that I've been following on Facebook. They're probably, I don't know if they'll get underway this year or not. Mm. If not, definitely by first or second quarter next year. But they're calling themselves so, so. There's there's two rivers here in in Charleston, the the Cooper and the Ashley. Yeah. And they both kind of meet at the ocean and form the the Charleston Peninsula. Mm -hmm. Um. So they're called East Cooper, or no, they're called Cooper River Brewing Company. Oh, Their building is sitting on the Ashley River. Dope. Like on the complete opposite side of the peninsula from the Cooper River. Oh. Um, so I don't know if they just came up with the name before they came up with the location and just yeah. didn't give a shit. That seems to be a thing that happens. Oh, by the way, the U.S. is, if you, as you guessed, not won a World Cup uh, in men's soccer. Womp womp. Uh, but there's a there's a hard lemonade company that started producing out here called uh, Fisher's Island Lemonade. And my father-in-law, the second my wife gave it to him, he went to go see, because Fisher's Island, he... He actually fishes off of Fisher's Island. It's a place. It's a, you know, it's an actual island. He goes and looks on the back. 
brewed in Colorado, and he's like, oh, Fisher's Island, Colorado, must be, because he has to do that. <laughs> it's like part of his DNA is he has to call you out on everything. And so he's like, yeah, it's just one of those things. Someone comes up with a good name that they think they like for whatever reason, and they like start making it wherever the fuck. They don't care. Yeah, well, the the other thing that concerns me that kind of makes me feel like they're more in the the just trying to jump on the bandwagon type camp. And I'm hope I hope I'm wrong. I hope they make great beer. You know, I'll I'll find out. Yeah. Um, they've been putting up pictures like, oh, you know, go ahead and get your your koozies and your t-shirts with our logo on them. It's like, oh. how about you focus on making some fucking beer first? Like, you yeah. must be really confident in your recipes if you're already starting to like market your swag. Yeah, my grandfather Coors gave me this. Should be totally okay. No, but that's the thing, you know, it's what's weird about it, and I've you've seen businesses, I'm sure, that before they even like make a product, they're advertising to people or they're like trying to get people to like, Oh, you gotta get that branding out there, bro. Yeah. And so I think these guys probably have MBAs. And like the yeah. the brewing company that's right near me, the the one that opened up near where I work actually, uh the company's run by a guy who was like, yeah, I'd like to open a brewing, you know, a brewing company. Should probably know how to run a business. And he went back and got his MBA. And like, but they're, they do not care. They don't care about branding. You show up with anyone's growlers, they'll fill it. They, yeah. they don't care. They just want people to come in and drink their beer. And they do because they opened up near where a bunch of alcoholics work. So that works out for them. Like they don't, they don't have to worry too much. They're always going to have money coming from those guys. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't know. People are weird about how they approach things. You know, I've worked in companies where they go, yeah, so what I did at this company, they hire a guy to fix things and he tries to turn it around by doing the exact same thing he did with a completely different business in a completely different industry. And he's surprised when it doesn't work. And this is probably somebody going, well, in techs, you know, in the tech field, what they do is they advertise before they're big. And then it's like, ah, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong for a brewery. Yeah. But then again, neither of us own a brewery. Very true. But the the more successful breweries, at least in this area, have they they do have great branding, mm. um, great logos, great locations, but they focus on getting good beer first. Yeah, like that was the first priority. Um, yeah. One of them. Uh, Revelry, which opened up here last year, which I absolutely love. Um, they've been blowing up lately with popularity, just because yeah. they're in, in kind of a, a more up and coming area. Mm -hmm. They, I mean, they recently won a couple of medals at some Nash, like the World Cup of Beer, I think it was. Oh yeah, some some competition. They won like a couple, a couple, uh, a couple silvers, a couple bronzes. Like, you know, that's that's what you need to do. Like, go out there, you know, fuck having koozies, like go enter your shit in some competitions like to me having having some awards speaks a lot more than you having a cool logo yeah 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 it's I don't know businesses are weird companies that like try to I'm trying to figure out a way to say this doesn't sound like fucking weird but at this point that craft market like you said the bubble's gonna burst someday yeah and that craft market is so crowded right now. You have to fight for shelf space in a lot of these places. You know, I go to uh, this smaller liquor store in town, the smaller liquor store that's near me on the same the same road I live on because, of course, there's two liquor stores on the road I live on. There's three Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> and uh, I go in there, and they're, you know, they're stacked. They might have, like, a random case of, like, harpoon and then that's on top of a case of two roads, which is next to a thing of travelers, which actually is behind, you know, a, a thing of whatever the fuck, or a hooker or something like that. And uh, you're just looking at it going, these are all technically, in one way or another, like a, a craft beer. They're not a Coors. They're not a mass brewery, even if they are mass brewed. Like Traveler right. is definitely yeah. mass brewed. Yeah. Two Roads is you can go to the brewery and see that they do it in the you know on weekends. Magic Cat was a fun tour too. Um, but the the weird thing is that they are everyone is fighting for space, and if you don't have the kind of people that go in and say, "Listen, this is the beer I have," and they don't kind of glad hand a little bit with the liquor store owners to get them put on 
get some shelf space and everything, it's really difficult for them to break in. My wife actually got the local Locus store to car- start carrying uh, this stuff called Down East Cider, which is a uh, it's j- your basic you know hard cider, but there's also a cranberry version of it, which she absolutely adores. And she told them, if you order this, I will be here every week. And so every week I have been there buying that cider for her. <laughs> since, <laughs> since she convinced them to do it, because she's not going to go to the liquor store, <laughs> I'm going to do it. Um, but yeah, you know that's the nature of it is that you have to have you know your people to kind of get out there and get the word and going and people to come in and say hey if you buy this I'll buy if you stock this I'll buy it kind of thing well and it's uh, yeah and I I completely understand on the the front of it has to be good beer or it's not going to work but there's an advanced element to some of this stuff I think well around here at least in in South Carolina it's about getting in with there's only like two or three main distributors Mm. um i can't remember what they're called but it's like that's what it is you need to impress those guys and more often than not those guys are impressed with good product Mm. granted you still need a good logo and decent marketing you know whatnot good branding but it's it's all about getting in with one of those distributors and and impressing them (laughs) Because you, you sure as hell, especially in Charleston, you sure as hell can't do it yourself. Like going around to one of the eight thousand restaurants and bars in this city. Because I mean, food tourism is huge here. Yeah. Like you, there's there's no way an independent brewery can go around and 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 try and market themselves. Like you, you have to get paired up with a distributor. Mm. Eh, I don't know. I, I really, you know, we don't. I don't work in the brewing industry. I don't even brew. So it's difficult for me to gauge it, but I've gone to enough of those uh, those beer dinners I've told you about that I've kind of gotten an idea of how they how these companies start up and how they market, and right. it's just it is very much like I went to college for this. I know how to run a brewery based on what the MBA co- program taught me, and so that's just I think that's a lot of what you're seeing there. Yeah, yeah, and it it's. A lot of the time, you'll you'll see, a lot of the newer ones seem to have um, two or three owners, quote unquote. Yeah. One's the brewer. One's like the business manager. One's the ideas guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they all could be ideas guys, yeah. but it that that's usually how it works out around here. Like mm. the the one guy is all about the beer, the other guy's all about the business, which mm-hmm. which seems like a great pairing. Like I. I don't. I know jack shit about business. Yeah. I don't even really comparatively. I don't really know a whole lot about brewing beer either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. I don't know. Got to go to school for that stuff. Oh yeah. There is the, the apparently the uh, brewing classes, according to this one guy in our area at least, the the programs that teach actual brewing and make you a master brewer. Well, you don't actually get to be a master brewer from just the program, but whatever. Uh, those things are packed, like, solid. Oh, yeah. For the next, like, five years, you couldn't get in. You're on a waiting list. Because everyone wa- is like, I like beer, and they just figure that they'll go brew their own beer. And they'll, yeah, be cut, they, they'll open a brewery. Well, they don't realize. They they just started one at the College of Charleston, um, and it's it it's a hard sciences class. Mm. Like, it's, yeah, all it's all chemistry. chemistry and biology. And people don't realize that. And then I think a lot of them are just going to drop it. So I'm, I'm going to try and audit the class this fall. Yeah. Just to kind of sit in since I'm a staff member. That'd be kind of neat. Yeah. yeah but... it, it reminds me of that Japanese class you tried to take. Dude, I took. I yeah, you took that one <laughs> kid tried to take. Wait, what? You were telling me the story that you were in a Japanese class in college, and like one of the professors had to actually, or the professor actually stated that. If you're there to learn how to speak, you know, learn to speak uh, Japanese just so you can watch anime, you're not going to learn it in Japanese 101. <laughs> and that kid yeah, walked Yeah, you're out. definitely not going to learn it in 101. <laughs> but, no, I mean, most of the anime kids stuck it out for a long I have no idea why I stuck it out as long as I did. I took it for, like, four or five semesters. Mm. Um, no, no, it was five or six. But, yeah, the, most of the anime kids stuck around for the entire, like, even farther than I did. They're the ones who actually went to Japan. Oh, <laughs> Oh man, that's. Anyway. I, I still think that's a funny story that he had to come in and say that, like, "Hey, heads up, yeah, this, this might be too much. You should go home and watch the dubs, you casuals." <laughs> that's what I imagine he said. 
don't know why. Uh, um, so, anyways, what were you going to transition to there? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, well, sorry to break that one up. Uh, <laughs> so, I, there was a few things that happened this week, video game-wise, that I thought were kind of funny. Um, one is that Warner Brothers apparently knew that Arkham, uh, Arkham Knight was broken for months on PC. Like, it is a known thing, and they went ahead anyways. So Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, and uh, so that was funny. And then, um, oh, what was the other thing? It was kind of hilarious. Oh, Ark Survival Evolved. Which is basically rust with dinosaurs. Yeah, I've I've seen some failed let's plays of it because it doesn't look like it's a very good game. <laughs> well, it doesn't look like it works very well. That too. Um, yeah, I watched somebody play. But like, you I can got take a dinosaurs. shit and throw your shit at people. Well, I mean, that's just that, I demand that of every game I play. I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> oh man, but like it looks so bad and it looks just like YouTube bait. It does. It's just yeah. like, hey, watch me. I'm going to tame a t- T-Rex. Fantastic. Thank you. Perfect. That's what everyone needed in, in their lives is someone taming a T-Rex and riding it around. Then again, I was like a big advocate of this game. I can't remember if it was like the Stomping Lands or something like that. That was basically the same premise, but you were a tribesman. You were not a uh, sci-fi whatever the fuck. And you could tame dinosaurs, but they were basically for like riding purposes not for attacking purposes and mm. things like the T-Rex were near impossible to kill with your arrows so <laughs> it was a little different game but it was I'm like I'm really waiting for that game that makes you feel like you're in a you've been abandoned on Jurassic Park and uh, you just have to survive again the dinosaurs are just too strong for you to do anything to them that'd be a great game yeah be a survival I'd, horror game I'd watch that yeah. I don't know if I'd play it I'd watch it yeah um, oh, also, I uh, I killed another guy who killed Arnold in Shadow of Mordor for a video. <laughs> Arnold seems to die a lot to low-level characters. Um, he might be bad at that game. We'll have to talk to him about that later uh, when he gets back. It is our 60th episode, though. Is it? Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. It, he he will... <laughs> He's the one who made a big deal about all of us being on the call for that, too. Actually, he was also the one who said, watch me not be there next week. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. He sent me a message like 8 o'clock saying, hey, I'm going to be, uh, I have to leave for 9.30, can we do the podcast earlier? And I'm like, man, you kind of put us in an awkward spot here with this late request. But whatever, Arnold will be back next week, I can tell him about how he's terrible at video games then. Um, he and I actually both bought Rust. Really? Yeah, I bought, well, I've had Rust, so he bought Rust. Um, but I played Rust. So that's well, yeah, I, I, I was supposed to buy that at some point. Yeah, you probably still don't want to do that, even if you have your new <laughs> Mac. It's not that it's a bad game, I just checked again. And the Mac port isn't great still. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. I would wait until it's stabilized a little bit. See, I thought that wasn't, like, a thing anymore. It's where Mac ports were, like, that much different than the PC ports. Uh, they, the PC moved, version. they moved the game into Unity like 5 or something like that instead of being DirectX and I guess that brought on a whole new host of issues for Max. I don't know I might have been reading some really old con- uh, content on that but it seemed like it wasn't really where you wanted to be to like justify a purchase yet uh, but the game itself was actually kind of interesting because there's no crosshair even if you get weapons so if you have a bow or something like that, you just have to guess where the arrow is going to go, and you can kind of, you can kind of ish it like just like it, real archery. Yeah, you can kind of like guess like, oh well, the arrow tips like here, but there's weird physics to it. Like you expect the arrow to drop a lot more than it does, um, but it just kind of sails on. But the funny thing is, uh, the crafting system they included in the game. So you hit tab now to go into crafting menu, and then like a console Minecraft, it has a list of things that you can just make and tells you what your ingredients list is and how many you can make of it. And so I was trying to get to a furnace in the first server I opened up on, and you need uh, 100 100 low-grade fuel, which takes three animal fat each. And I had, like, I don't know, 60 
animal fat, and I'm like, this is going to take fucking forever. How do people ever get this? Well, underneath them telling you how many, like, whatever is you're going to consume, it tells you how many there are, uh, or it tells you how many you're going to make if you make, like, whatever amount you're saying. So it's like 5, 10, 15, whatever it is. Well, right next to that, it tells you how many, you know, it's like, there's an X, there's a circle, there's an X, and there's a number. And that means this is how many you get for each one of them you craft. So I didn't realize this until I was making, like, arrows, and I made 50 arrows. And then I got, like, 150 arrows. And I'm like, what the fuck is this about? Because you get three of them each. And I'm like, huh, that's weird. And I go and I look at the uh, the low-grade fuel, and you get 10 for every fucking animal fat. And I'm like, are you kidding? Or like, I could have made this within, like, five seconds of starting. Why is this not more, like, clearly noted? Because I'm, you know, I don't know how you do it, but I'm going to definitely look at the numbers that I can adjust and the numbers that they give me as inputs. I'm not looking left and right of where they tell me to look. You know? So I felt really dumb. That was, that's my Rust story. Uh, but, man. <laughs> killed a guy who's sleeping. I didn't see many other players, but I saw all their buildings. Uh, it's different. It, Arnold seemed to be having a good time in it. He played it like for five, six hours this weekend. I only got a couple hours in. Uh, so he might know more than me. He might have actually built something where I just went around and like stole stuff from people's bodies and slept in bushes. So <laughs> my, still, uh, just, still just running around naked. Yeah. I ended up getting a huge dick. So that was kind of fun. <laughs> you should just wear a shirt, but not pants. Yeah. What's up, guys? <laughs> Put some pants on, for God's sake. <laughs> Swinging around, <laughs> flopping. Or uh, find some chaps. Yeah. <laughs> assless chaps. <laughs> uh, All chaps are assless. Uh, hey, I always feel the need to uh, point that out. I also played Road to Redemption again. I'd beaten it. Oh, that's, yeah. That's another Unity game. I, it's more of a like a roguelike, but for bike racing, like you, every stage is kind of like a floor in a rogue roguelike game, and uh, they added like fifteen or twenty stages. <laughs> so before it was like, oh, you start on stage three of nine stages, and you're like, okay, and then I beat, I don't know, seven or eight stages, and I'm like, I should be done by now. What the hell is this? And I finally look at the map when I finish around. And it's like, you're on stage 13. There's 12 more to go. And like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> and so they, they threw a lot of stuff in that game since last I played. And it was actually still just as fun. They switched up some of the combat mechanics to it. Uh, so before you'd, you'd basically earn the super hit, if you block somebody, you'd get a charge hit. And you it automatically deploy the second you hit a button. Like, whoever you hit next would get a super hit. Um... Now you charge it up after blocking a couple shots, and then you hold the swing button that you want to use to uh, to hit him with a super hit, and it like has a big flaming weapon and increases the size of the weapon, and it does way more damage. So you can use it to knock like three or four guys off their bikes at once. Uh, but it seems like they toned down some of the crazier shit, like it's raining cars sort Aww. of stuff. I, that might have just been a, uh, because of the map that I was on, but it, it seems like they toned it down because some of that stuff could be difficult. Like, there were some like if you had a bad drop on a car, it could land right on you. <laughs> it was it could be ugly. Isn't that kind of the point? Yeah, I guess. But they also gave you the ability to kill the semi trucks that would occasionally be part of the race as well. Because you know it's normally like people on bikes that you can hit. Well, sometimes right. semi trucks got accidentally tagged as part of the race, and. <laughs> So if you have C4 or a grenade launcher, you can blow them up and take them out of the race like you could other players. <laughs> it's, and it says on the top right, you killed semi-truck. <laughs> like, of course I did. Uh, but no, it's still a lot of fun. I look forward to that getting finished up and getting out there as a product that people don't buy in early access. But who knows yeah. when that's going to be. They seem to be adding a lot of stuff and a lot more to it. I'm really hoping that uh, online and... Uh, local multiplayer is going to be a big thing because I'd love to uh, have some people over for a party and be able to just hook up some Xbox controllers and go to town on that with some people. But 
might be a while before that. I would never try to play that with a keyboard, ever. Yeah. Too complicated. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's those were my games. Did you play any more Binding of Isaac this week? Anything interesting? Um, a little bit. I was out of town a good bit for the fourth. Yeah. Um, played a little bit before I left and watched. I don't know if I, I can't remember if I talked about this last time or not. Have you seen this game, We Happy Few? I think you mentioned it, but I haven't seen any of it. Yeah, well, apparently they've been doing some some updates for it, and it's 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 interesting in that it's it's first person, um, but it's also procedurally generated. Mm-hmm. So the levels are different and randomized every time you play. Yeah. Um, and it's it's well, I wouldn't call it I wouldn't call it steampunk. I'd call it maybe kind of somewhat. Well, no, not even Victorian. It's like it's very British. Okay, I'll tell you that. Um, but apparently you're, you're this, someone, you're you're referred to as a downer. Yeah. Meaning that you're actually normal and everyone in this area, this city is basically being drugged by the government. It seems to always be happy to take this, this stuff called joy Mm -hmm. that's in like the water supply and I, I, I don't think I don't think it's it's at a, I think it's like still pre-alpha that you have to actually know someone at the studio oh. to get your hands on it. Um, again, Generic B is kind of doing a playthrough, or not really even a playthrough, just kind of a, an occasional look at it whenever there's an, an update to it. Um, so you're not really sure what the story is, but it's it's a first-person game where there's actually a survival element as well. It's where you have to find, you know, food and water, but you have to be careful with what water you find because you can only handle so much of like the actual drugged water oh. before you become one of the, the, the happy people. I see. Um, it's, it looks real interesting. It's got kind of a, a weird art style to it. All the, all the female characters in the game look like, um, what's that girl's name? Helena Bottom oh, yeah, Carter, Helena Bottom Carter from uh, Fight Club. Yes, they look they look just like her. Huh. Like just the crazy hair, like heroin addict thin. <laughs> That's kind of funny uh, in a way. But yeah, uh, that, just, it just seems that to it seems to buzzer. match match the kind of uh, mood they're going for, I guess. Yeah. Oh yeah. Very. I don't know. Somewhat apocalyptic, or not even apocalyptic. Just kind of weird society government control almost by bio, almost kind of bioshock yeah type type feel to it mhm yeah it sounds kind of like a a spiritual successor or any of the guys who worked for the bioshock studios working for that game or anything i'm not sure i can't even remember what studio it is that's that's putting this out i'm sure you could find it pretty easily mm. it's just called we happy few yeah i could look at that. Oh, my dog decided to shake. That probably got caught on the mic. Yeah, I heard uh, it. Yeah. My animals always come in here, even though it's like 100 degrees in this room, uh, to watch me podcast. They want to make sure that I do them right and don't uh, subject them to anything less than high-quality content. So they're really angry with me all the time. Uh, <laughs> so anything, uh, like... Is the point just kind of like survival in a city, or is it? In well, a there's world? there's different different areas or different cities. Um, you you start out in a pretty pretty poverty stricken area. All the houses are dilapidated. There's like rubble in the streets. Um, so it's you you kind of start out in a little home base you have that's looks like it's in either either some kind of bomb shelter or down in a sewer. Hmm. So you've kind of made made it home because you're. I think you're you're actively being hunted because you're you're a member of the society that's not on the government controlled medicine or chemicals or whatnot. Yeah. So people recognize you as not being, you know, one of the the I don't know the joyful the joyous. I don't know what they call yeah. the people in that game. It, whatever the the buzzword yeah. is for it. Yeah. Is. But and then you and then you go to a different part of town that's you know more upscale called Wellington Wells. And that's that's where the really happy people are, and you have to. I th- I think you do have to kind of, you know, manage a certain chemical level to keep in the game. You know, keep keep it teetering on the edge where you're not going to be, you know, completely overtaken by the chemical, but enough to where they don't see you as 
a downer. Mm-hmm. It's just weird. It just it just looked unique. Like I I I just I try and find games lately that aren't really what I've seen before. Yeah, and that's getting harder because it feels like every third game that comes around is like, here's a survival game. It's in first yeah. person and you craft things. And I just talked about Rust. But like, <laughs> it just feels like that is, you know, you were talking about Stranded Deep a few podcasts back as well. And oh yeah. It's like another survival game stranded by yourself somewhere making stuff up from wood and stone. And it just like and then salvaging stuff, and then like yeah, I I haven't heard. Uh, supposedly they were still working on the game with more updates, but I haven't I haven't heard anything out of it. Yeah, I because supposedly they were going to have a way to where you could get rescued if you wanted. Like there was there was an end game to it, mm. but I I really haven't been paying that much attention to it. Yeah, I don't know. It's just. It feels like there is, and there are all these, like, it's not like an established studio doing this. It's not like EA is going out and saying, we're going to get into this game. It seems to be the realm of, like, first-time developers or Kickstarter companies or whatever it is, like, jumping into this and going, okay, we're going to make a game. What's it going to be? Well, you're going to go survive and craft. We call it survival craft. And... (laughs) Actually, you know, sorry, Microsoft's getting into that game because they're making a fucking Minecraft Windows 10 edition that is going to remove a bunch of features uh, because it's going to be the edition that can cross-play with the Xbox One and the Xbox and uh, Windows Phone mobile versions and all this other stuff. So they have to pull a bunch of features out of the game because those things don't exist for the Xbox One and Xbox version yet. And so the Windows 10 version is free to anyone who owns it on the PC. It's $10 to get into the beta. So Microsoft is launching a beta of this game to pull Minecraft back to where it was three years ago. <laughs> what the fuck? Ooh, ooh, better one, better one. How about this? Star Citizen, the game that has been crowdfunded to $84 million over the last three years, uh, it now has said that the FPS module of the game is delayed indefinitely. Yikes. That game is a huge scam. Like, it is some sort of weird video game themed pyramid scheme. Uh, because, like, the dogfighting module that they were going to add to the game didn't work. It was like Arena Commander or something like that. Didn't <laughs> get launched until almost three or four months after it was supposed to launch. And it was buggy and broken and not finished. But apparently the way the game is made is that uh, Robert, Chris Roberts Space Industries or whatever the fuck they call themselves they're making the game across multiple studios basically contracting out all these other companies to make different modules for the game and then Chris Roberts' company is like stitching them together to try to create a seamless experience between them and it's just not happening and it's not going to work and that game is going to become vaporware and Chris Roberts is going to ride off with your $84 million. Stop giving him money, <laughs> you morons. But there is like, there's a there's a thread in GBS about what's happening and what's happened with that thing in the last few years. And, like, recently you could pay $500 to get access to this new type of ship. And the benefit of that type of ship is there is a video or a mini game within it that allows you to mix drinks by pressing buttons. Like that is your that is your reward for five hundred dollars as a mini game. Oh boy. And, and five hundred real real world dollars too, by the way. Not like fucking Star Citizen money or something. Real world money. It's Bitcoin but for space nerds. <laughs> Don't buy Star Citizen. That's that's one positive we haven't talked about in a while. I haven't heard anything out of Bitcoin lately. Because it dropped off the face of the fucking earth. Thank God. It's down to... Oh my God, I keep dropping my phone today. It's down to uh, 200 something like that dollars per Bitcoin. Down from the high of like 1000 because the market completely collapsed. And the reason you don't hear anything about Bitcoin is because if you say anything about Bitcoin right now, the only thing you'll hear is... Wasn't that a big thing a couple years ago? Because <laughs> no one cares. Like, almost every company that was like, yeah, we'll, Microsoft actually uh, said they were going to accept Bitcoin last year. 
uh, but in the fine print it said basically Microsoft is going to accept Bitcoin through like a BitPay service which means that Microsoft is just getting the money from whoever yeah. you send those Bitcoins to like they're not they're not holding Bitcoins themselves and then of course some people go well Microsoft didn't say they weren't going to hold the Bitcoins themselves which uh, to me makes it feel like nah they're taking the cash they're taking the cash because they know it's the best way because the Bitcoin is volatile as fuck. Um, so yeah, that's good for us. That's good for everybody, really. The less we have to hear... I don't know, man. Bitcoin, it gives us less to talk about. It does, to a degree. Um, but this week was just like absolute trash week because I was working four tens, and I don't like that. And then when I got home on Friday, I did not feel like doing anything at all. Or, well, sorry, Friday, I did not feel like doing anything at all, and then I ended up like screaming at an old lady through my car window for 10 minutes, so that was good. That was fun. <laughs> she shouldn't have done what she did. What'd she do? She um, turned left in a lane that was meant to go straight, and so when I went to merge to the right after I uh, after I turned from the right lane, the correct lane, I should say, um, I found her in the space, and I yelled at her through the car window, like, trying to explain to her that that is a bad place to be and she was like really angry at me for trying to not you know for me to not murder her I needed her to move because I needed to get to that lane then she almost murdered somebody else because she needed to go straight at the end of the uh, the little section we were on and I was going this was into a parking lot and I needed to go right so she went straight so did the person who was in the left lane which is the lane to go straight from uh, so she almost murdered them too by causing them to merge into her and uh, then I walked past her while I was going into the store and there was almost a confrontation <laughs> like I almost had just like what the fuck is wrong with you at her and I just I realized I was going into that store in a few minutes I was there for another store at the time but I'm like I, I need to go into the grocery store too I can't yell at this person this kind of sucks Yikes. so that was a good time I was fucking upset but after I got home like I did not feel like doing anything but drinking because I was like I almost died twice today because of that old lady that's fantastic <laughs> and I probably wouldn't have died I probably would have banged up my car but I would probably have murdered her and gone to jail for it because there was no reason for her to be that stupid but anyways that's getting off topic of video games and occasionally politics which I don't think we're going to talk about this week. No one really said anything about our politics sidetrack last week. Yeah. People were talking about Batman being broken, but I feel like that's a normal thing at this point. <laughs> that's that's more important to society, apparently. Uh-huh. It, it really is. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I, was, uh, I played more Counter-Strike this week, because of course I did. And I actually, for the first time, I deleted an episode... Not because I forgot to record my audio, or because the game screwed up, which is they've happened a couple of times each, uh, but because I felt like a complete shit heel after the game, and I've learned to regret things because I'm an adult now, and I was like, I can't really let this see the light of day. But to give you an idea, we were in a game, and or I was in a game, and this kid started like he was maybe 16, started like calling out mid-game strategies. He's like, all right, two of you guys go right, one of you guys goes middle, two of you guys go left, let's do this. And I'm like, that's, what? How, why are you saying these things? Like, why can't we just play this game? And he's like, no one else is listening to him. And then he, of course, dies. This, this is where it started, by the way. He gets murdered immediately. He goes, no one was helping me at B, why don't you guys rotate fast enough to come save me? And he was the only person that died. We cleared out the entire attacking team within seconds of that. And so he's, like, berating us. And so I die immediately next round. I'm like, if only people were coming to help me. And some other guy jumped in on it. And he's like, yeah, I died too. What the hell? Why don't you guys come over? I said they were over at A. And, no one... and we just kept doing it to this kid. And he was so fucking furious. And I'm, of course, trash-talking this kid to death. Like, every time he dies, I'm like, oh man, if you were just better at spraying, you probably wouldn't have died there. He's like, well, I died after you. Well, yeah, you died after me, but I actually killed somebody, so I don't know if that makes you worse or better than me. Probably worse, because you're probably like six. And I was just kind of like going off on him, and at the end of the very, like the very end of the game, last round, 
he shot me in the back of the skull point blank with an op. I pissed him off so much. And then he's... But that was only after he goes, what rank are you? And I go, I'm ranked fucking 30 years old. I don't need to give a fuck about that. He was not happy about that answer. <laughs> Holy shit, he was not happy about that answer. He got on me. 30 years old, you're playing a game for kids? I'm like, no, there's like violence and swearing in this game, mostly for me. But like, you know, you can't you can't say it's for kids. People have been playing this since 1998, boy. You weren't even born yeah. then. Oh, Lord, he didn't like that answer either. You're just dropping <laughs> fucking knowledge on people. And it's, oh, it was so bad. But I played, because uh, it was Fourth of July weekend, I played drunk as shit this weekend. And I did better than I usually do playing drunk. That's usually how it goes. And uh, I ended up, well... It was bad because it also meant that I was like quoting rap lyrics half the time, and hey, so, that's my shtick. Yeah, I know. And at one point, I like down two or three guys with an AK, and I go, "AK forty seven is the tool," and I said it over the team speak, and everyone's like, "What the hell are you talking about? Like, Fucking white people? <laughs> you kidding me?" <laughs> but no, it was it was actually a really good weekend for that because I was pissing off people, but I that that 16 year old that I infuriated I felt so bad after I I did that thing that I'm just sitting there going like I can't really let this see the light of day because it casts me in a really bad light and I'm like 99% of the time and I've done it in one or two videos I don't go out of my way to infuriate my teammates if they give me a reason to do it I'm going to like you can't I and everyone who knows me uh personally would tell you that if you give me an inch I'm going to take a fucking yard and I'm going to just pull it right out of your fucking flesh you know it's not going to be it is not going to be nice if you give me any opening whatsoever and that kid gave me an opening and without pissing him without touching him all I did was say things enough to infuriate him and enough to make him feel bad that he got really fucking angry at me and like you know usually it's you pop them in the head a couple times at match start or something like that, and they team kill you, and they get punished for it, and you don't, and you're kind of laughing about it. No, this was like good old-fashioned verbal trolling, and it was at once fun, but at the same time, like, man, I am acting like a shit heel to this kid. I don't know what his life is like. It's probably shitty, because he's probably 16 years old, and his mom's probably telling him to stop failing second-grade math for the 50th time. <laughs> but whatever it was, he was, he was fucking furious. I'm higher rank than you. I don't give a fuck. He ended up and I'm like a silver elite master or something like that and he's a silver elite and I'm like, oh look at that. What happened there? Oh, I was just not letting it go. I just couldn't do it. And yeah, you don't want to really broadcast the fact that you're a shit heel sometimes. So I've now mentioned it here. This podcast gets almost as few views as my Counter-Strike videos. I recognize the fact that my Counter-Strike videos don't get views. I don't care I have fun doing it. Um, but I ended up getting an ace, too, like, later, earlier today, which was, like, the second time I've done it, but it was hilarious how it started. Somebody threw a, a flashbang right at my feet. We're on Inferno. Someone threw a flashbang right at my feet at the bottom of apartments, and I just waited a quarter of a second. I didn't move. I just waited a quarter of a second, then started firing, and I hear the headshot noise, and I'm like, either I died or I killed a motherfucker. And my vision comes back, and I'm like, I killed a motherfucker. I pick up his gun, I go up the stairs, I headshot two more guys, and then another one comes around a corner, I pop him, and then a third one comes up from the way I was I was uh, before, and I popped him too. And I'm like, that was an ace. And <laughs> everyone's in the chat like, you got a fucking ace. How the hell did you do that? I flash you, blah, 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 all this shit. It was, oh, it was amazing. Nice. So Dude, flat, Flash kills are just the best. Uh, I know. That was just, I was not expecting that. When you when you get those, my favorite is actually shooting someone through smoke. Uh, there's, I think, one of the videos I just edited, I ended up firing around the other day, like a complete wild round, just trying to scare off somebody near a bomb site. And it, tra it, like the trajectory of the bullet was such that it nailed somebody in the head in the smoke next to the point. And I'm like, where the fuck did that kill come from? Just, I, like, some of the stuff, like I say, the moments of, like, pure frustration with that game that you can have when you go, like, I don't know, 3 and 16, and. 
I mean, that's the scoreline for the game. Those moments of frustration, they're so well balanced by the moments of absolute amazement at how good you can be at times. And, like, the the feeling of weird accomplishment and, like, tenseness that can come with the game when you're, you know, the last person alive on the team or whatever. Like, I, I know that you haven't played as much as I have in recent weeks, so no. it might be a little different, because I think the last time we played was a lot of fun. Last time we played, oh, yeah. we won, like, every round, and we're just, like, fucking trashing people, and it was great. Uh, but, like, the time before that when we played, and the time before that one was, like, infuriating jackasses who've been playing Dust 2 for fucking 20 years. Yeah. Just jacking you. I just, yeah. That's why Dust 2's out of my rotation. Is it really? Oh, it's completely out. I just How long does it take to find a match? Like, uh, up to three minutes. Um, <laughs> but that's mostly because... Uh, this is the weird thing I found this weekend. Rust's server infrastructure is absolute fucking garbage. It'll tell you you have, like, 400 ping to servers that are, like, 10 feet from your house. And, and like, if you refresh the server browser, it may take up to five minutes and a reset of the game before it'll populate the server browser again. Yikes. Like, it's just, like, whoever designed that section of the game is a crackhead of some description. Um, but Counter-Strike is the same way. You'll get told, like, hey... Y'all motherfucker, you don't have, like, you know, it's going to be ten minutes to a game, and you're like, no, it isn't. You exit out, and you come back in. Within 20 seconds, you've got a game. So I've just learned to figure out when the game's fucking up and come back and do it again. Seems to work. Gotcha. So uh, we should probably end this podcast. Yeah. I didn't realize what time it was. But, yeah, it's it was counter strikey this week. It was Shadow of Mordori. I'm almost done with that game. Uh, I got to do some fun stuff today with it. That was kind of neat. Nice. Yeah. People will probably see that video before they hear this podcast, the rate I edit this thing. But <laughs> it takes... You know the sad thing about that podcast, the, the podcast time it takes, is that it takes me maybe 10 minutes total to edit one of these things. And I just, it's like my car payment bill. I get told at the beginning of the month, hey, you have to go make a car payment. And it's not like I don't have the money. It's just that I don't have the patience to go through the pay my loan system. And it takes like four minutes total to do it. And I'm just like, I don't feel like doing it. (laughs) Nope. I just don't feel like it. And then I'm like, the last day of the month, I'm like, good thing they have a weird policy about late fees, which is they don't seem to have them. (laughs) So I'm going to abuse that shit. Holy hell. Um, but yeah, that's... Meanwhile, your credit score is now two. Nah, I still own this house. Or no, well, I have the mortgage payment on this house, which I've never missed one. So that should be fine. Actually, my mortgage payment went down recently. I don't know why. It didn't really explain it. should really adjust that. But anyways, enough about house chat. <laughs> no I more think... adult... Nah, no adult chat. Nah, let's not do that. I just... No, I only used my adult status to trash kids in Counter-Strike. Thank you very much. There you go. Yeah. All right, so uh, that'll do it for this. Three Toes, anything you want to finish off with? Uh, Go fuck yourself? I don't know. Uh, We're not doing Roll Tide no more? (laughs) I don't know, man. I'm anxious for football season. Uh, I don't really want to tease myself. Uh, It'll be fun. It'll be a fun year. Or do I? Uh... (laughs) Yeah.